But listen, I think most Yankee fans especially hope this thing gets settled before we get to April. Uh, you would think. Now, you would think that Michael Strahan, who does a morning show with Kelly Ripa, mm-hmm. does the pre-post halftime show on Fox, wouldn't have time to read a book, let alone write one, but he has a book out called Wake Up Happy, The Dream Big, Win Big Guy to Transforming Your Life. And Michael is nice enough to join us now. Michael, it's Michael and Don. How you doing? What's up, fella? I thought, I, I, yeah, thank you for the introduction. I thought you were going to say, who would think he'd even be able to read? I was like, well, <laughs> no, no, we're not going there. <laughs> you know, Jay Johnson, who used to do the games with uh, John Sterling on radio, the Yankee games, you know, he wrote three books. And he, he would actually say, I'm the only guy who's written more books than I've read. Oh, you, oh, oh yeah, I've I've I've, I've, read, I've read more than I've read. I <laughs> now, I, I saw the title of your book, and I can't wait to dig into the book. Wake up happy. I'm going to tell you right now, Michael. I have two great jobs. I have a great wife, two kids. I wake up miserable every single day. So cure me of this. That's on you, man. It's your mindset. <laughs> you're telling yourself you're miserable when you wake up. You just got to flip it. Tell yourself just the opposite, and realize that. Your life and your mindset and the way that you approach your day is up to you. And um, they're, like for me, I, I found out I had to have a routine because every day is different. But you have to have a routine to put yourself in the right frame of mind. So mine is like listening to music and just the people that I interact with and how I interact with people first thing in the morning kind of puts me in the right mindset to get through the rest of the day and, and, and make the most of the day. Now, whether it's tackling a quarterback, going on a morning show, writing a book, all the different things you do, especially you know pre and post on Fox, is the mentality from a preparation standpoint the same? A lot of it, yeah. I mean, a lot of it is comp- competition. Competition drives, drives most of it. So for me, football was competitive. I never wanted to look bad. I never wanted to represent myself in a bad way or not give the most of my teams when guys look, they could say, okay, this is somebody we can count on. We know he's going to give it everything. That's the same way with TV. And I watch other shows. I watch, you know, my show occasionally, but I just, you know, you self-evaluate. And I self-evaluate, try to make sure that I'm doing the best that I can do. And so far, so good. It's work. But you got to have work ethic. That's, Everybody got a dream, but if you're not willing to work for the dream, it's just a, just that. It's a dream. Now, you got a couple of rules in the reality. I'm sorry, Mike. You, you have a couple of rules no, in the ahead. book, and the first one is really interesting to me. Listen to other people. Don't take their opinions for fact. Have your own experiences. Draw your own conclusions. I always wonder when people like, oh, we're always asking people's opinions. You're the one who has uh-huh. to make that decision sooner or later. Yeah, I learned that from O.J. Anderson, my rookie year. He's a says all around locker, and, you know, like Father Time. And uh, um, at OJ, with, uh, he would just throw all, all kind of knowledge. And he said, you're going to hear about so many great players. and Everybody's going to tell you how great this guy is and how, you know, you should be afraid. And he said, get out there, play that person yourself. You make your own opinion. And he was right. There were so many guys you heard about who weren't as good as they were advertised to be. And there were some guys who you never heard about who were better than they were ever advertised to be. So. That's life, man. Go through it, get your own experiences, and maybe what's bad for somebody else may not be so bad for you. You know, the one thing we have in common when you're doing Fox and and we're doing this radio show, and I'm looking at the list, you know, don't prejudge. How difficult is that to do? Because you're kind of given so much information before you see a player, right? And and it, and sometimes you're almost asked to formulate opinions before mm-hmm. things are completely developed. We're going with it with Porzingis with the Knicks. He's played 12 games, and now we've got to kind of temper the expectations of fans who think that he might become the next great player. So how do you not prejudge people? Well, I kind of look at him, and I think he's already defied what anybody expected because when they drafted him, what did everybody say? Oh, who's this guy? This guy's going to take forever to develop. He's not even ready right now. And he worked really hard, it seems like, to make sure he's ready. And now that he's ready, everybody wants to tone it back. And I I think that um, that's a tough thing about New York. There is no really no middle ground. You're either good or bad. And, And in a lot of ways, we have to temper our patience as a sports fan and be fair to the to the player and get that player the opportunity to really develop. But so far, so good for him and his young career. It'd be fun to watch, and if you need that. The Knicks need a young player, somebody that they um, can look at every night and just be consistent. And so far, he's he's been pretty good at that. I, I've, I've wondered this the longest time, and since we have you on the show, how do you do the Sunday show in L.A.? and then do the Monday morning show in New York. When do you fly? Do you fly a red eye? Is it tough to make it? Are you exhausted on the Monday show? How do you do it? Well, you make up your mind, basically. When they first 
thought about it, I said, this is going to be insane. This is kind of insane. But now, fourth year of doing it, it is insane, and I know that as a fact. <laughs> but it's but it's fun. Like, I, I leave when the show is over on Friday here in New York. I try to catch the first flight I can out to get out to L.A., and uh, try to you know get acclimated, but I'm usually in bed so early out there because of the time difference. Saturday I'm up early, so I'm working out in the morning uh, with with Jay Glazer over at his gym, and um, then I just kind of relax Saturday and do my notes for the show. And this Sunday we're in the studio at five, I mean, six o'clock, six a.m. Wow! And um, we're finished at five. And then I catch the earliest flight or the quickest flight I can catch out of L.A. to get back to New York. And certain certain days I can sleep on the plane and I'm not tired. And other days I get back here and I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to make it tomorrow. But for some strange reason, your body and mind wakes up and I get on the air and I feel I feel good. Usually the better shows are when I'm delirious and don't know what the hell I'm saying. And you wake up happy. And I wake up happy. And regular because you see them at a musical commercials. You got yeah. it all, Michael. I got it all. I'm happy. You got it I'm all. Regular. All right. Now, we, we, we'd be remiss if we didn't ask you some things about the Giants. They, they seem to me to be that, that perfect flip a coin team. Are they making the playoffs or not? They're 5-5. Five and five. They have a bye week right now. They played the Patriots tough. They let it get away. Four games they've lost leading with two minutes left in the game. Is that a good or a bad thing that they can improve on? Well, I definitely. And the Giants have lost three games this year that they definitely shouldn't have lost. I mean, they've lost games that you look and you go, man, how, nobody really loses a game like that. Right. Um, but they seem to have done it three times in one year. And this is, when they come back from this bye week, they're going to have to come back and, and be ready to play. You can't come back from a bye week and warm up and, and, and try to win a few after you come back a week or so. you got to come back and win immediately. And um, But this is a team that has surprised all of us. I think they played a lot better and have been more competitive in, in their games than I, than I think I thought they were going to be. And they definitely should win the division, especially with the Cowboys with all those injuries and losing seven in a row. And, and the Redskins are coming on strong. And the Eagles, you know, they're up and down. So I think the Giants have been the most consistent ones. And I do expect them to win the NFC East. 